Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh uh, Peace be upon you all This short video will be about how to image the interatrial septum using three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiography and how to use this image during structural cardiac interventions We will propose uh, a maneuver that is called Rattle 90 maneuver and we'll come to this uh, later as an introduction, two-dimensional TE has an inherent disadvantage of being only 2D that makes it very common to lose a structure of interest with minimal heart motion and respiration or probe motion. As you can see from this image, this is a short axis based image from two-dimensional TEE. This is the aortic root, this is the septum, and you can see the catheter tip here tinting the septum. With simple heart motion, I can lose the tip of the catheter and the rest of the catheter cannot be seen in many instances with simple heart motion and also with the probe motion and the patient respiration as well because it is only two dimensional image very thin uh, slice of imaging so once the catheter goes away few millimeters from the imaging plane you will lose it then you have to manipulate the probe again and again to bring the catheter back into your screen and this consumes time and increases fluoroscopy time as well this illustrated uh, anatomical uh, picture is just showing the interatrial septum from the right atrial perspective. Here they removed the right atrial wall, as you can see, to see the interatrial septum from the right atrial side. So uh, this is anatomically oriented view. This is superior vena cava, inferior vena cava opening, the fossa, and the coronary sinus. Aortic valve is here, so this is anterior, and this is posterior, this is superior, this is inferior. This is what's called anatomically oriented view of the interatrial septum from the right atrial perspective. If you are using only two-dimensional TE, you have two basic views to start with if you are imaging the septum or if you are guiding transeptal puncture, septal crossing or whatsoever. You have the simple bicable view which is almost at 90 degrees to show you what is superior and what is inferior. Here is superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, left atrium and right atrium. And you have the short axis base view, which usually shows you the anterior-posterior relationship. Once you see the aortic valve, so this is anterior and this is posterior. If you are using three-dimensional TEE, here we will come to our proposed maneuver, which is RATL 90 maneuver. RATL stands for rotate, anti-clockwise, tilt, lift. 90 because all the motions will be 90 degrees. So rotate, anticlockwise, tilt, lift for 90 degrees. Rattle 90 maneuver. Starting from the simple bicaval view that everybody knows, which is around 90 degrees, mid esophageal view. Here we will have the left atrium, right atrium, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. Starting with this view, we will activate the 3D zoom mode on the machine. As we all know, once you activate the 3D zoom, the screen will be divided into two uh, small screens. The left-handed image will be your reference image that you started with, which is a bicable view. And uh, the right-handed image will be the elevation plane or the other orthogonal plane, which will show you the anterior and posterior image, the elevation plane. The, the tip here or the trick in order to get a very good uh, anatomically orient oriented view for the interatrial symptom, you have to optimize your poxes to the ostia of the vena cava. Here, the depth should include the whole septum, but you have to stop at the ostia of the vena cava. Don't include the right atrial wall, because basically we need to remove it to get a similar view for the illustrated anatomical picture that we saw earlier. And then, on the other hand, also the depth should include the whole septum and include part of the aortic valve to know what is anterior and part of the posterior wall to know what is posterior. Once you optimize your boxes, click Acquire again to get the truncated real-time volume for the interatrial septum with the same orientation as the 2D image. With the same orientation means if superior vena cava opening is here, so this circle will be the superior vena cava opening. Left atrium is here, so left atrium is here. If I'm interested to look at the right atrial side of the interatrial septum, so what should I do? Rotate anti-clockwise for 90 degrees to bring the superior vena cava opening up. Rotate anti, here is RA. And then tilt lift. The whole volume should be tilted lift around the y-axis for 90 degrees. That's why it is 90. This is 90, and this is rotate anti-clockwise for 90 degrees, and here tilt lift for 90 degrees to get 
the on fast view for the intraatrial septum from the right atrial perspective. This brown color is the blood intensity inside the right atrial cavity. Once you turn down the game, you will get rid of the blood intensities and you will have a very clear view for the interatrial septum from the right atrial side. Superior vena cava opening is here, inferior vena cava opening, station valve, coronary sinus opening as well. This faint part is the fossa. So once you decrease the gain more and more, the thinnest tissues will go away from your image and the thinnest tissues in the septum are basically the fossa which you are, which you are interested in if you are uh, planning for septal puncture or, uh, or so. And this is the interatrial septum itself, and this is the aortic valve. So this is anatomically oriented view, exactly like this figure. Aortic valve is here, the fossa, and this is the IVC, coronary sinus is here, eustachian valve, and this is superior vena cava. We will see that in motion now, starting from the bicaval view. Then once you activate the 3D zone, the screen will be divided, as we said, optimize your proxies to the ostia of the vena cava, include the whole septum in depth, and then activate again. This is one beat acquisition, that, is, that means this is live mode. Superior vena cava opening will be to the right as the reference image, and then rotate anticlockwise to bring superior vena cava opening superiorly, and then tilt lift for 90 degrees, you will face the interatrial septum, but this brown color, as we said, is, is the blood only. So just decrease down again, and you will get very clear life, and uh, this is very important. This is a life mode of acquisition. That means you can monitor life events like septal puncture or septal crossing or coronary sinus cannulation. Aortic valve is here, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava opening. This faint part is the fossa, eustachian valve, coronary sinus superior, inferior, anterior, posterior. With some retroflexion, you will get the superior vena cava opening. With some antiflexion, you will see the IVC opening, station valve, coronary sinus, very clear. If this is the anatomically uh, oriented view for the anatomical figure, and this is what the 2D will give me, and this is what the 3D TE will give me. Superior in the 2D is pointing to the right, but the real superior is pointing superior. This is too much informative and easy to understand for everybody. This is a quick view live to show you how fast it can be acquired by cable view, and then uh, showing the septum, superior vena cable, inferior vena cable opening, and then optimize the boxes to the ostia, as we said, acquire, this is the live volume, rotate anticlockwise, and then tilt lift, then we will decrease the gain to get rid of the blood intensities. You can see this defect inside the septum. Doors deflection will show you the uh, severe vena cava opening. Antiflexion will show you the inferior vena cava, station valve, coronary sinus. So during septal puncture, this is the catheter coming down from the inferior vena cava towards the superior vena cava. Aortic valve is here, and this is the fossa, as we said. This is the equivalent view by 2D TEE. As you can see, it is not anatomically oriented at all. With simple heart motion and respiration, the catheter is coming and going from my view. But here, the heart is moving, even if the patient took a deep breath or in mechanical ventilation, or if I move simply my probe, just few millimeters or minimal motion, I will not lose the structure of interest, which is a fossa. I can see everything in one view, and this is life. Now the interventionist, even without me telling him what to do, he is pulling down the catheter from the severe vena cava towards the fossa. It's very clear. It creates a common language between uh, me as an echocardiographer and the interventionist as well. So he knows where is the fossa, and he can see his catheter, and he can see the tissues at the same time. This example is showing you even the image, if, if the image quality is not superb, again still he can guide uh, the catheter to the fossa. Here he was pointing a little bit anterior, so he rotated clockwise to rotate posterior to point posterior, and now he's tinting the fossa as you can see. If you are not appreciating the tint too much, you can tilt more to the left to see the septum from a side. This is the tinting, very well appreciated if you just tilt the septum to the left.
if you tilt more to the left now you are looking to the septum from the left atrial perspective and you can you appreciate and you can appreciate the tent very well from that view as well this is after septal puncture from the right atrial side superior vena cava here is the inferior vena cava the septum is punctured by the catheter if you tilt it or if you rotated the image 180 degrees to see the septum from the left atrial perspective you see you will see the catheter facing you like that this is how the view will look like in the fluoroscopy only you can see the catheters and metals you will not see the septum at all we already published that maneuver recently in the journal of cardiology research and practice with the title of a proposed maneuver to guide transeptal puncture using real-time three-dimensional transesophageal echocardiography available to study by myself and my colleagues this is an open access paper so simply you can google rattle 90 maneuver and you will see uh, the first line you can go and access the paper freely and you can download it uh, for free we also reported using the same anatomically oriented view for coronary sinus scandulation in echocardiography also you can use it during asd closure for transeptal crossing this is the rattle maneuver uh, uh, we applied this to get the anatomically oriented view for the septum from the right atrial perspective this is the ostium secundum asd and the interventionist was uh, very easy to him to just see the defect and see the catheter and the cross the defect very easily i hope that uh, was uh, of benefit for everybody who was interested in 3d te especially those who are involved in uh, structural cardiac interventions and this is my center, Prince Sultan Cardiac Center in Al-Hassan, Saudi Arabia. And thank you so much.